for deconditioning. So a lot of children and adolescents and young adults who have cancer or who are survivors have a low cardiorespiratory fitness. They have a low physical function. And this is a common problem that increase with years in these patients. So with the lack of physical activity, this can result in reduced physical and mental health. So we can find in these participants physical deconditioning, a lot of fatigue, cognitive dysfunction, psychological distress, and everything, everything can lead to a risk of new health conditions. So definitely the lack of physical activity can be a real issue. And patients diagnosed with cancer need to be physically active every day. They don't need to run. They don't need to swim really fast. They just need to move and they need to be physically active. And that's something you know, and you will not learn something new here, but it is essential to support everyone in their regular practice of physical activity because there is a relationship between physical activity during childhood and adolescence and physical activity and health during childhood, adolescence, and young adults. There's only benefits with exercise. There's no harm in being active. Only benefits for patients diagnosed with cancer. It's something you can learn everywhere. It is safe, it is feasible, and it's really important for everyone who has a diagnosis diagnose of, of cancer. So when you are looking closely to the literature, you can learn that physical activity helps improve cardiovascular function and also help to improve functional ability, musculoskeletal system, and psychological health. With an adapted exercise prescription, the improvement of physiological and psychological parameters is feasible and safe. And right now, which is amazing, there is growing evidence for the positive effect of exercise on fatigue and well-being in patients diagnosed with cancer during and after treatments. So for a lot of time, when I started um, my degree at the university, I learned that regular physical activity was really important for athletes. You need to be physically active if you want to run really fast. Very, very important exercise about like the sport performance field. And then physical activity, and I learned that, that it was for the healthy behavior. You need to do physical activity if you want to be healthy. It's like it's for your health and there is very amazing benefits. So when you are talking with your patients about regular physical activity, they don't really care about their cardiorespiratory fitness and they don't really care to have a good maximal oxygen consumption at the end of the day. What they want is to be autonomous, is to have a good physical function. And most of the time is to be happy at the end of the day. Like doing physical activity for them is feeling, they are being better with exercise. So doing regular physical activity, you can improve your quality of life, which is really, really great. And that's something really important that we need to share with our patients. And findings from the current literature show that physical activity brings a lot of health benefits for patients diagnosed with cancer, regardless of their age group. And the literature confirmed that moving more every day is beneficial and safe for children, adolescents, young adults, adult and older adults diagnosed with cancer. And that's the same for everyone, which is nice. But something we need to understand is that adult cancer patients are not the same as children diagnosed with cancer. And there's a quote, very, very nice quote from the ACSN that has like a few years ago from Twitter. And they say that youth are not simply smaller adults, but a special population with their own specific needs. And that is true. You can learn a lot of things from the adult literature diagnosed with cancer and a lot of things from the children, like the pediatric oncology literature. And most of the time, it can be really hard to apply the knowledge in the adult population to the children population. It can be really hard to ask a children to do, for example, 30 minutes of physical activi activity every day at moderate intensity. They want to have fun. Maybe it's simpler to ask that to adults, but they also want to have fun. But with children, they definitely just want to have fun. They want to move. So they don't really care if it's like during the afternoon, evening, they, they just do it as they want to do it. So we need to take that into consideration. 
So because the um, child cancer population is different than the adult cancer population, it's also very important to understand that the AOA population is a specific and unique population. It stands for adolescents and young adults. It's a mix of adolescents, so from the pediatric population, and young adults from the adult population. In the US and in Europe, between 4.5% and 5% of all new cancer cases occur in AOA patients aged between 15 and 39 years old. Approximately 85.5% of AOA diagnosed with cancer survive their cancer for five years after diagnosis. There is, however, some variation between and within countries in definition of AOA. That's something we are always talking about. How do we define the age group of AOA patients diagnosed with cancer? Because, for example, in, in the USA, the National Cancer Institute define the AOA as everyone diagnosed with cancer between the age of 15 to 39 years old. In Canada, however, it is between 15 and 29. In Australia, 15 to 25. In the UK, 13 to 24. In Europe, 15 to 24. So there's a lot of variation. So when you are trying to study this population, then between country, you can find a lot of difference in the definition of AOA. So if you are looking closely to the literature, sometimes it's between 13 to 24, and other time can be between 15 to 39 years old. So it makes this population very unique. It is unfortunately an understudied population, and they are at different developmental stages in their life and they have different life disruptions. So it makes this population very unique and very interesting because it's a mix of adolescent and young adults. Adolescents, maybe the only thing we need to think about is going to school. And the young adults, the things we need to think maybe it's having work, going to work, um, financial maybe challenges every day, uh, fertility issue, maybe peer relationship issue. So, they have different needs and they have unique and medical, they have unique medical and psychosocial needs that need to be taken into consideration. So that's also really great because new challenges for supportive care teams, and there's definitely a need to understand the benefits of physical activity in this unique population. Because we know a lot of things in the pediatric population. Most of the time can be really hard to apply this knowledge to the adult population. We know a lot of things in the adult population, and sometimes we can be really complicated to apply all of our knowledge in the pediatric population. And right now we have this unique and specific population that maybe need different physical activity intervention and different physical activity support that we need to find about. So one year ago, I conducted a scoping review to map the evidence of physical activity intervention in post-treatment adolescent and young adult cancer survivors a really interesting um, review. A total of eight studies were included in this review. And we found out that they were published between 2015 and 2021. So it's definitely a new area of interest. And physical activity intervention were all individualized and mainly aerobic intervention based on the ACSM guidelines, the American Thoracic Society guidelines, the physical activity and health guidelines from the US Department of Health and Human Services, and the physical activity and public health guidelines from the CDC. Most of these guidelines are from the adult population, not from the pediatric population. So some of the researchers, and due to the uniqueness of this population, started to develop their physical activity intervention based on recent systematic reviews in both population on clinical guidelines, physical activity recommendations, behavior change literature and population specific preferences for physical activity because they have different needs so maybe they need a different physical activity attention something really new that we don't have in the pediatric population and we don't have in the adult population right now what we know from this review is that the study duration was between eight week and 12 week the type of pa was mainly aerobic and strength training physical activity Physical activity session duration was between 15 minutes per day to 30 minutes per day. The number of physical activity 
uh, per day was between um, three to five session, session per, per week. And it was a mix of supervised and unsupervised physical activity session. The good news is all of these studies show that physical intervention is feasible and acceptable. And there is some challenges. If you are looking at the limitation sections of the study, perspective, conclusion, then you can find a lot of new challenges and new perspective that can be really relevant for this field. I'm trying to take some of them and to present it to you today. So the wealth of research perspective presented in, is representative of the early developmental state of the current literature in the area of physical activity intervention in AOA diagnosed with cancer. It's definitely a relative new area of, of interest. So there's further efforts that are still required to better understand and identify the potential range of positive and negative self-perceptions in airway after cancer treatment. To determine the effect of physical activity on the recovery process, we also need more effort to ensure study assessment are appropriate and relevant to better understand the cost of physical activity interventions. I think that's something we can apply in every population to replicate published findings with larger sample size and to target AOA specific needs. For many, many years, we answered research questions, which was really great, but now we also need to answer AOA needs, like specific patients' needs and specific patients' questions. You will find out that recruiting AOA can be a big challenge can be really, really hard because they are not at the same point in their life as the children, for example. So we need to find different strategies. And to do it, we also need to develop physical activity interventions specific to their needs. Because if we want them to participate in our study, we definitely need to provide them physical activity support that meets their needs. So if you are looking at the literature overall and the different review that has been published, you can find out that physical activity is safe and no adverse events have been reported in this population. Physical activity can definitely help to increase the quality of life and um, the physical activity behavior of these patients. A study from um, Dr. Adams reported that 78% of AOA want physical activity support. So there's definitely an interest from these populations to do more physical activity. There's definitely a need of more randomized controlled trial. And unfortunately, physical activity is not well researched in the population of AOA. And that's something we know because it's definitely a new area of interest. And for many, many years, and maybe like when I started to be interested in this population, I was like, yeah, we have a lot of knowledge in pediatrics, a lot of knowledge in the adult population. So why don't we take everything and put that together and do research with this population? But when you are talking with patients, is definitely not what they want. They want different things. They want um, their own support. So we need them, we, we need to help them to do a little bit more physical activity every day. Five minutes is definitely better than nothing. 30 minutes is definitely better than five minutes. So we just need to support them and give them the right tool if we want them to do more physical uh, activity. So the expectation, like I said, is to take everything we know to apply it to the airway population, but the reality is so different. They have different needs and their personal life can be a big barrier to engage in more physical activity. So everyone can agree that the literature in airway and exercise is heterogeneous and scarce. It is in fact representative of the early developmental state of the current literature in the area of physical activity interventions in airway diagnosed uh, with cancer. So right now, collaborations, working across sites, and using multiple and varied sources of recruitment are necessary to increase the, increase the number of AOA cancer survivors and AOA diagnosed with cancer approach and enrolled in future studies. This will help us to better understand the benefits of physical activity in this unique population. So I'm definitely really happy to let you know that we created and developed with Dr. Katrin Smith, the North American Consortium on Exercise in Airway Diagnosed with Cancer. The short-term goal is to bring together experts, healthcare providers, patients' partners, and researchers with an interest in exercise and airway patients diagnosed with cancer. And the long-term goal is to work together in order to enhance evidence-based medicine, 
to support research training at different university levels and to answer some of the challenges that everyone meets in this field. If we are going back a few slides, you can see that there's not a lot of AOA recruited in these studies. So we definitely need to work together if we want more robust studies, if we want to enroll more participants, and if we want to bring the right physical activity intervention for this population. So it's definitely a work, um, a work in progress. And there's definitely some challenges that we want to, to answer all together. So the sample size, the funding can be a big change. I can see it in, in the chat box from the first presentation. We need more funding. And so working together can definitely be very helpful to, to have more funding. The recruitment process, participants needs, needs to be answered. The physical activity intervention, and if we can find the right physical activity intervention or something we really want to do as AOA diagnosed with cancer, maybe the dissemination and implementation process of physical activity to improve clinical care will be more feasible and maybe easier. And we, I, will, I would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who agreed to be part of this North American Consortium on Exercise in AOA Diagnosed with Cancer. And it's really amazing to see everyone working together for the benefits of the patients and also to move this field in the right direction. There's definitely a, a lot of work to do in this field. It's definitely a first step in this direction. And hopefully um, we should be able to, to make physical activity more accessible to, to everyone in the population of, of AOA. So thank you very much, everyone, to be part of this, um, of this group. And thank you very much for listening to me today. It was really nice to talk to you about exercise in AOA and what is going on in, in this field, little update to let you know the work we are currently doing. So thank you. And if you have any questions, I would be very happy to answer them. Yeah, thank you, Maxime.